The zombies are coming, motherfucker. What are you gonna do about it? Hey, how'd you get in? Doesn't matter, shit for brains. Now listen carefully. Since I'm a mummy, I'm already undead, so I've got nothing to worry about. You, however, will be Kentucky fucked in 10 minutes of shit hitting the fan if you don't follow my instructions. So I'm gonna help you get through this shit in one piece, all while looking fresh as fuck while doing it. This is Mike Osiris' guide on surviving the zombie apocalypse. Okay, so step one is prepare for the inevitable in advance. A zombie apocalypse requires you to be in peak physical condition and to have a few things in advance so you'll be a lot better off to begin with instead of swinging around a tree branch like a retarded caveman. Gather all the guns, and I mean all of them. If you live in a country that outlaws guns, GET A NEW FUCKING COUNTRY! Because when the dead start walking, the only law of the land left will be the Second Amendment. America. And since your fat, sweaty ass only walks when you leaves your mother's basement to get more tendies, the guns will be especially useful since you can kill things from a distance instead of running, because Allah knows you aren't doing much of that to begin with. And the last thing you should prepare is a formidable shelter stocked up with supplies. When the bullets run out, you'll find yourself defenseless and surrounded by a bunch of pissed off dead guys. When that occurs, head down to your basement and lock the doors behind you. You already do this 24 hours a day, so it won't be so different from your average life. As you sit down there and wait for the zombies to disperse, realize that it'll take a while for them to hippity hoppity get off your property and have some food and drinks to keep your ass alive. This is where I have the upper hand over you, because I have a fridge in my bomb shelter to hold all of my Mountain Dew, Doritos, and Tendies while you had to go upstairs out of your neat cave to get more. Anyway, as soon as those shambling sacks of shit leave, it's time for step two. Find some wheels. Getting around when everything has gone to shit will be a lot tougher than before. The gas pumps will no longer be dispensing, so having a car is not a good long-term investment. You need a way of getting around faster that doesn't require gasoline or spare parts that cost three fucking grand. And I know what you're thinking. So will a bike work? No, you fucking window licker! If one of the tires pop on that bike, you're back to running away like a fucking chump. You need something to get around faster that looks dope as hell while you're doing it. That's where the Razor Scooter comes in. You ride around on a bike, you're as good as zombie food. You ride around on a Razor Scooter, you'll make those undead panties moist. And it even works out as a weapon too. Attach some sharp shit to the edges of the scooter and start swinging it around, and the next thing you know, you will have a LITERAL RAZOR SCOOTER. And if you want to be even more of a decomposing pussy magnet, swap out the scooter for some motherfucking Heelys. Oh, and don't forget the Spider-Man helmet. Step three is don't trust your fellow man. There will be people desperately knocking on the door to your shelter begging to be let in. Let them fucking die. In the apocalypse, it's not the dead you have to fear, it's the living. You let them in and suddenly you find yourself bleeding from a shotgun blast to the gut while they rob your ass blind like a- <clears throat> I've been advised to stop telling this joke. And even if they don't kill your ass, they'll be eating your food that you paid for with your hard-earned welfare checks. It's better to just not let them in at all. Also, no people means no personal attachments so you don't have to deal with their inevitable deaths when they do some dumb shit to get themselves bitten. But it's not always going to be good times in your bomb shelter. Eventually, a metric assload of undead shitters will make their way toward your house for a bite of your scrumptious, juicy ass. And when the horde is that big, there isn't enough max ammos or insta-kills to save you, so that means it's time for Step 4, Rip and Tear. Stand on your front porch shirtless as you observe the horde cross your property line. The second that they do, yell out a sick battle cry, like this. <coughs> this will show dominance to the zombies and that you are not to be fucked with. If your primal war cries aren't enough to deter them, get in there and let your fists do the talking. Now keep in mind that they will try to bite you to turn you into a member of their eternal mosh pit. So use that same logic and start biting them before they bite you. That way, they'll be infected with the human virus. 
Rinse and repeat until you get more humans on your side and instruct them to keep biting the zombies. If you do all this correctly, the humans will outnumber the zombies. Once the last zombie gets infected and turns back into a human, then go to step 5. Command your new army, for you are their king now. If you followed every step as I told you to, you are now the god of the new society you built. Reap the rewards of endless power and women, and make sure to subscribe to Mike Osiris as your post-apocalyptic maiden goes down on you. Now if you'll excuse me, there's some dumbass zombie gnawing on my shoulder that I have to deal with. Hey! I'm a fucking mummy, dumbass! I'm already one of you! Why the fuck are you biting me? Subscribe to my ghost series, or else I will use the world to freeze time and steal a bitch. See you in the next video, you pathetic waste of space.